Hi, I'm going to show you how to use the new Wallworm Skywriter to send your 3DS Max scene into the Source game engine as a HDR or high dynamic range sky map, sky texture. So the first thing you'll need to do is design your scene. Skywriter is not a design tool. It does not design your environment or create your skies. You have to do that with the standard 3DS Max tools or with third-party plugins such as Vue or Dreamscape or other plugins. So once you have your environment set up, you open up Skywriter. Now the first thing you'll want to do is, is create a new sky. We're going to do that here. And we're going to move our sky to the position in the map where we want the Skywriter to create the sky uh, pictures from. So when you've done that, it'll create this helper object in your scene. This helper object stores all the information for your sky, including the name of it, its gamma, resolution, etc. You can give this sky map any name you want. We can call this My Custom Sky, for example. You should not use special characters such as the slash, a period, or use spaces in the name. Those will automatically be taken away and replaced with underscores. Also note you do not use underscore HDR at the end of your name because those are automatically appended to the name by the tool. Later on, if you've closed this file, you can get the information back by opening up Walmart Model Tools and choosing this Pick Existing Sky button. When you do that and click your sky, your details are pre-filled into the form. Now assuming that you've set up the Skywriter settings properly, which are down here in the settings tool, if you click it, it will bring up this little window, you have to have the bin directory set up, which is the directory where vtex.exe is located for your source mod, and the material root folder for your mod in SDK. And if you're using a game like Left 4 Dead, you'll have to set the game info directory. Now assuming you have all of those set up properly, you can then render your sky maps at and compile them directly into source. We're going to do that right now. First I'm going to show you this button here. If you click this, it will open up an ex a Windows Explorer window that is in the directory of your skybox for your materials for this mod. Now mine is empty here. Now look at the directory just so you understand this fully. It's in your program files, Steam, Steam apps, your username, SDK content, your mod, and then the material source and then skybox. This is the location where the textures and the batch file to compile them into source ready textures are going to be located. Now this tool is going to render out seven files. It's going to make six of them for a 2D skybox, the up, down, left, right, back and front. It's also going to make a seventh texture which is a cube cross that you can then bring into a third party program called HDR Workshop. I'm now going to render out my scene and I'm going to put this on pause while I do that. So to do that I'm going to click the render sky maps. Now once your render is completed, which can take several minutes depending on your render settings, you'll get this pop-up that says the images have been rendered. If you click the open button, you'll now see that there are a bunch of files in the directory which was previously empty, which are the name of your sky with an underscore HDR at the end for the cube cross image and then there's also ones with uh, suffixes BK, FT, LF, RT, DN and up which are the six textures for the sky. Now I want to point out that if you just now press this compile sky it will actually compile the sky directly into source right here and right now which I'll do that it will pop up with this compile window and every time a face is completed you'll have to enter a press a key to go on to the next face unfortunately uh, the command to tell the process to do this without 
prompts to click buttons doesn't seem to work so you will have to click a button every time it goes to the next one you'll do this six times and then your textures will actually be in the game now I want to point out that again if we open the directory where your things are these are your raw files in your SDK content mod material source skybox the actual VTF textures are in your actual game not in the SD content to see this texture in the where it is finally output the compile path we would have to go to the actual game which in this case is Counter-Strike Source C Strike go to materials go to skybox and we're going to change date modified so I can see the most recent ones and here are all of my VTFs and VMTs which are the textures for the sky so at this point if I want to add the sky into the game I would use this name under the map properties and sky name and hammer my custom sky underscore HDR and then it would be used in your game now back to our raw files this my custom sky underscore HDR you'll notice that this file is much larger than the other six faces and the reason for that is this file is the cube cross file now the purpose of this file is if you want to open it up in HDR workshop and tweak it to your special needs and output it as uh, the PFM files that it needs so you can either compile directly at any time also by this batch file so you can open up this image in HDR workshop and you'll see that it's in the cube cross and you can change his exposure now you'll notice here that in this scene everything is washed out dramatically the exposure is way out of whack now the reason for this is in 3d studio I rendered this out with an exposure control value that did not really set this how I want. So I'm going to close this out. And what you'll want to do to really get your scene to look like what you want, you'll have to click rendering and choose exposure control. Now in exposure control, what you may want to do is set your scene to either logarithmic exposure control or the mental ray photographic exposure control this one is probably the preferred method however I'm going to right now choose the logarithmic exposure control because it's more simple to demonstrate what it is and how it works so in our scene here I'm going to click here render preview and it's going to make a preview of the scene from the angle of the current active viewport and it may take a minute and now you'll see that according to this this is why our scene was so washed out look at the brightness here so what you will want to do here actually is modify the exposure of this scene first thing we want to do in this instance is probably process the background and let's try render preview again to see if that changes anything it didn't really you can see everything is really washed out still so what you can do here is go to the brightness contrast midtone physical scale and start adjusting the output here so once you've tweaked out the exposure values that you're wanting for your scene you can go ahead and re-render it again by clicking render sky maps now I'm going to briefly talk about the gamma settings um, the initial release of Skyrider automatically assumed certain gamma settings for your output bitmaps um, which is really naive but we've uh, I've changed that in the current version so when you open up Skyrider, the default gamma is now going to be set to 1.0 unless you have your exposure control set to the 
middle ray photographic exposure control. So in other words, if we change this to middle ray photographic exposure control, then we open up Skywriter, you'll see the default gamma is 2.2. If we open it up and it's on anything else, it will be set to 1.0. Also, I want to point out that if you have set automatic exposure control or the linear exposure control wall warm model tools will not let you render the skies that is because these two settings will create incorrect sky colors that will not match between the different pieces so you must either use no exposure control logarithmic exposure control or the mental ray photographic exposure control in honesty, I have not yet tested pseudo color exposure control, which you may use for some randomly psychedelic sky texture. And then once you've recompiled or re rendered these, you can again open the image in HDR Workshop, such as this, and start tweaking the exposure to your needs and working as you normally would in HDR Workshop. And briefly, we're going to go over a few of the settings again. Now, this OCP button, it stands for Old Cube Path. If you are compiling your skies for certain mods, such as Left for Dead, you will have to turn this on in order to compile. Note, this is not to be turned on on various mods, such as Counter-Strike Source and other Orange Box games. How, however, you do want to turn it on for Left 4 Dead. Also, if you're using Left 4 Dead, you need to make sure that in the settings you have set a game info directory, which is located, which is the directory of your mod where the game info.txt is located. If you are not using Left 4 Dead and such, you can click the unset game info if you have accidentally set the game info directory. Also, the bin directory must be set. Now I want to point out that the bin directory, the pick material root, and the game info directory, these settings are shared between Skywriter and the other Wallworm product called Wallworm Model Tools. Changing any of these settings, such as the resolution, the gamma, the name, the OCP, anytime you change any of those, you will then have to re-render the skies and then recompile. If you change the name, then choosing Compile Sky will not work unless you have already re-rendered the skies. Now to add the sky to my map, I take note of what I named it, and I open up Hammer. Then in Hammer, I'm going to go to Map Properties. In here, I'm going to go to Skybox Texture Name. If I click there, I can enter the name of my sky, in which case, it's my custom sky. Now, this is important. Skywriter automatically names, gives a suffix to your name, HDR. So, take the name that you gave it, add underscore HDR, hit apply, and now when you play your map, that sky will be in the sky.